Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. If you have your hymnals or have access to the music that was emailed this week, uh, you may turn to 752, Holly, 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 or uh, just join in the chorus. Uh, it's a familiar hymn to us. And please stand. Welcome to all of you who are here in person and those of you that are online. It is wonderful to be together again. And I wonder if we can just give a round of applause to everyone who has helped to bring this morning together and just a round of applause to God for this beautiful day. You may be seated. Morning has broken, but this morning is different. The, the birds, birds are singing tunes of joy in the trees surrounding the graves. The, the flower buds are bursting in colors, vibrant around each stone. We've come to visit the grave of a friend, but he is not here. The, the sun, sun is rising, rising in the east. east. The, the shadowed grays turn bright. The, the sun, sun is risen in our hearts. Darkness and death end in defeat. defeat. Now we understand what Christ said, what Christ did. He is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Again, if you have the Voices Together hymnal with you this morning, turn to number 495. Morning has broken. Or in, on your phones if you have access to what was emailed this week. And I don't know about you all, but I love Easter sunrise services that start at 11 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Right. It right. is rising somewhere. <laughs> Morning has broken my father's
number 346, Christ the Lord is risen today. Number 346, and please stand for this. And you may be seated, that still, while seated, lift our glad voices to number 340. Lift your glad voices. Lift your glad voices and
one thing we can do, whether we are gathered in person or on Zoom or in our own homes all by ourselves, is to pray. We can pray alone and we can pray together. And I'm just grateful this, for this community who has continued to pray for the joys and sorrows that we've known about over this last year. And it's a privilege today to come together once again in prayer in this place. I'll give you some options as this is a resurrection prayer. So something that symbols to you hope as you pray. You might want to stand. You might want to put your thumbs up. You might want to just hold your hands out. But something that symbolizes the hope that we have when we can bring our joys and our burdens to God. Seven times you will have the opportunity if you choose to say, we are an Easter people, and you will know when it is time to say that. So let us pray. Thank you, Lord, that you are an impossibility specialist. The long winter's grip pried off us finger by finger. The whole earth greening under the spring sun. You bring new life where there is lifelessness. You resurrect hope when we are mired in darkness. We, we are an Easter, Easter people. people. Bring Easter to all among us who are grieving. Your solace that we will see our loved ones again. Your comfort that you will be with us in the hour of our death. We, we are an Easter, Easter people. people. Bring Easter to all among us who are despairing. Give us light and meaning in our times of suffering. And your energy when life is at its lowest ebb. We, we are, are an Easter, Easter people. people. Bring Easter to all among us who are ill in mind or body. A healing touch to calm our fears your soothing presence to carry us when we falter. We, we are an Easter, Easter people. people. Bring Easter to all who are locked away in jails, as well as those among us chained by addictions of every prison of prejudice. We, we are an Easter, Easter people. people. Bring Easter to our neighborhood and our city. The stranger welcomed, the hungry fed, your kingdom coming here in Lancaster County. We are an Easter people. Thank you for showing us who we are through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and for transforming us daily through your creative spirit. We are an Easter people. And Alleluia is our song. Thanks be to God. Amen. Um. Okay, and now we are going to welcome Carmen to come up and invite some special guests to come forward. Or not, should we wait? Should we wait? Okay, we're gonna come back to Harriet. You take your time, Harriet. We have a song we can sing. Ufu <laughs> Rahini, hallelujah, number 341. And? Number 341. Um, if you were in East Africa this morning, um, which would have been hours ago, you would have greeted each other with Yesu Ame Fufuka, meaning uh, Jesus is risen. 
So this song is, uh, we will sing the first verse in Swahili and then three verses in English. For the scripture reading this morning, Stan has asked us to pay attention to Acts 10, 34 to 43, and I will be reading from the Common English Bible. And this is Peter speaking. He says, I am really learning that God doesn't show partiality to one group of people over another. Rather, in every nation, whoever worships him and does what is right is acceptable to him. This is the message of peace he sent to the Israelites by proclaiming the good news through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism John preached. You know about Jesus of Nazareth, whom God anointed with the Holy Spirit and endowed with power. Jesus traveled all around doing good and healing everyone oppressed by the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses to everything he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him up on the third day and allowed him to be seen, not by everyone, but by us. We are witnesses whom God chose beforehand who ate and drank with him after God raised him from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify 
that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Pastor Stan, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Anne. It is just so good to see all of you here today. And uh, I'm not sure how many of you recognize we actually are zooming this. Eloise is up in uh, the house up there, and she's manning the Zoom. And so people are actually, there are some people at home that are watching as well. We're trying something new, and we learned from the from Merv and Nora Hess, who are members of the Covenant Mennonite Church down in Sarasota, Florida. We sort of learned how to do some things too. So we have people from all over the place that are that are worshiping with us. But it's so good to be uh, with you here this morning. And, and Nan and Ken, uh, Thank you so much for opening your place up and welcoming us here. I think this is just, uh, we, are, we are so, so fortunate to have, have uh, people here like this that offer their, their homes like this. The kids were doing some hunting for Easter eggs, and I know that there were some questions, and it's interesting. Thank you, Janelle, for, for organizing that and, 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 uh, and such. So. Um, Janelle gave me the questions, and she actually had a whole bunch of questions, but I know that she didn't put all of them in there. Uh, so I'm kind of curious. I want to ask a few of these questions, and uh, if there's a child that had this question, I would like you to stand up just where you're at. Okay, if you found this question in your egg, what is one question you want to ask God? Did somebody uh, have that one in their egg? Oh, okay, right over Diggory. Oh, you didn't? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, here's another one. What are three things you like about yourself? Did somebody have that? And they were asking, asking people. Okay. Did anybody have that question? Okay. Liza did. All right. So let me ask you the question. Wh wonder who, who did you ask? Do you remember who it was? What adult answered the question? Okay, adult, be honest. Stand up if you answered that question. Ah, Pastor Carmen, all right. Okay, Pastor Carmen, what are your three answers? What are the three things that you like about yourself? Cook and bake without recipes. Uh, you can do public speaking. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to ask. Uh, okay. Here's another question that might have been in one of the eggs. Who is your favorite person in the Bible? Okay. Who did you ask? Okay. Kevin, what's your answer? Jesus, hey, way to go. That's, that is a great answer. When people ask me sometime during the week, what did you preach on this last Sunday? I always say Jesus. That's it. That's my answer, period. I don't say any more than that. Um, how about this one? Um, who is your favorite teacher? Who had the, Anybody have that question? Maybe no one had that question. Uh, here's another one. What famous person would you like to meet? Does anyone have that? No? Okay. Well, anyways, we won't spend too much time on it. Let me just say this about, I think that questions are good and they're helpful. They help us to think about life. And they're, you know, on a day like today, they're fun. I, you know, it is so good to be back together again and just enjoying each other's company. I think questions help us think deeply at times about life and love and, and what goes on in, in our lives. Some of the questions are maybe more fun kinds of things. Others are deeper kinds of questions, things that, 
that make us reflect upon life. I wonder what deep living means. That's kind of the theme of today, deep living. You know what? Deep living. Maybe we should ask the cicadas when they come out what deep living means. You know, if you haven't been following, they're coming out this year. And in a few weeks, it'd be interesting if we have an outdoor service, what it's going to sound like. We may, you know, we, we'll just sort of listen to the cicadas and maybe we won't even have a music team up front or, or, or something like that. But yeah, the Brood X is coming, or Brood, Brood 10. And, and I think, from what I understand, the southeast Pennsylvania is one of the key areas where the cicadas are, are going to be. They just come out every uh, 17 years. So is that what deep living is? You come out, you show your head every 17 years, and then you go back down again. Is that deep living? Or is there something more to loving Jesus and living as a follower. I think sometimes it means that we need to think more deeply about what we're feeling, some of our emotions, the things that are, that are, going, that are going through our, our minds. Sometimes it might mean that we need to slow down a little bit. Maybe we're in the midst of things, we're just rushing around and we just haven't stopped to really reflect upon what life is like. Now, I've been a pastor for 40, almost 40 years, believe it or not. That shows how old I am. And I've done a lot of Easter services. And, oh, you know, I have to admit, this is one of my favorite. I, I'll admit that. I think that a lot of that is because I felt so sort of cooped up. And finally, we can be together like this. Now, on Easter, I always find that I have to sort of be on top of my game. And I'm thinking, OK, I'm going to have this great sermon and everybody's going to be renewed and there's going to be this 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 incredible energy in the days ahead now what's interesting though is i think a lot of pastors feel that but what's fascinating is the sunday after easter is one of the lowest attendance of the year so we come with all this life and energy and yet you know reality hits sometimes i suddenly realize that the message of jesus what we're trying to communicate is, is, is difficult, it's challenging. It's something that we have to constantly be reflecting upon. And so what does it really mean that Jesus is risen and is alive today in our lives? Alive in you, alive in me, alive in everyone. Sometimes I feel like I just can't preach it or teach it or I just don't even quite know what it means in life. And so I'm challenged by that. I know the resurrection of Jesus is inside of me, even though I don't always get it. But it's our hope. It's, our, it's, it's the hope of, uh, of our lives. You know, Christmas is in the wintertime, and it's, you know, it's all about Jesus' birth and that kind of thing. But Easter is really the center, is the focal point of the Christian life. Because we celebrate Jesus being risen in this world bringing life and energy to us. Now, I've had a lot of struggles in my life, and I've walked with lots of people who have had struggles. You know, and I know a lot of people, you know, here, you've, you are in various kinds of caring ministries, and, and that's, that's, that's important. But I've walked with people who have, you know, who have just been somewhat depressed. I've walked with people who have had great losses. I've walked with people who, who have felt abused in some way, shape, or form, over over the years, and so I'm glad for 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 doctors and nurses and teachers and counselors and and all kinds of people like that. But humans are humans, you know. We can only offer so much to the world. We can't fix all the problems. Now, this past year has been difficult. This has been a tough, tough year, I think, for all of us. I know very few people who have just been energized by this by this past year. You know, we've not been with our friends at school, at the, at the playground. We haven't had sports like we normally do. We haven't been able to go out and play on soccer teams and all those, all those kinds of things. You know, we've had to have school at home. You know, we haven't had Sunday school. You know, it's been over a year since we've been able to have Sunday school or the, or the fellowship times and all of that kind of stuff. It's been, been all kinds of stuff that we've, losses that we've experienced in our lives. 
In this past year, I have to admit that I've been angry at the violence towards people of color that hits really close to home. I've missed greeting you all at the welcome table, shaking your hands, maybe hugging s some of you. I've missed the Sunday school. I'll admit this. I really don't enjoy preaching to the camera. You know, cameras just don't give me very much feedback. You know, like I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm seeing your heads nod. You know, Jonathan, we need to get the camera moving its head up and down or saying amen or some, you know, the tech people. You know, once in a while, can you say amen when I preach and say something that maybe you're excited about? Amen. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Just remember that next week or whenever it is, we're back in the sanctuary. Rachel Held Evans says this, Christianity has died and risen many times because we have a God who knows his way out of a grave. Some things in church will die, have died, and will continue to die, maybe need to die. Beneath all the disappointments, is the Savior. Jesus is Savior because he won't settle for just accepting our mess, our struggles, the things that we're sad about, the things that we're, that, that we're really struggling with. That's why the gospel really is also known as the good news. That's another, that's another phrase for it. It's good news. Jesus is always calling us to come out of our tombs. And he stands at the tomb and asks, why are you settling for despair? When I'm inviting you, I'm calling you out of the tomb. And so it's time to come back to life. The door is open. Jesus is inviting us. And so Easter means a lot of things to a lot of people. You know, there's the stores that are selling chocolate and Easter bunnies and all those kind of things. You know, and Christmas has passed. We're now in the midst of, of Easter. But for followers of Jesus, Easter is the center of our faith. It what gives us life and energy. It's the festival, the party of, of the resurrection of Christ. Victory is the theme. Living and loving not just sort of wallowing in our mud and our despair and our difficulties. But Easter invites us out of the tomb and into new life. And so what does deep living mean? It's not just the cicadas. It's not 17 years underground and suddenly we come out. Maybe it's learning to enjoy and take pleasure in everything that we do, in all the things that are around us. May, have we been missing at times some of the joys that, that we've been given? You know, it, it's, it's difficult because it, it's different than what it, what, it, what it has been in the past. But what are the things that have given us life? And so I've, had, I've found myself looking at what are the things that give me life? What are the things that offer to me some new ways of being. You know, I've had to look for, you know, we haven't been together as a group, so as a larger group. So I, I, I've, I've found new joy, though, in being in smaller groups. I've found joy in connecting with my family and friends that are in Canada. I found joy just by, by finding a coffee place that's sort of separated. I go to Wegmans now, by the way. You know, early in the morning, there's nobody there. It's a big open space. And meeting with one or two persons is an awesome place to, 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 to go. Now, please, don't show up, you know, kind of thing, because then you're going to destroy it. I told some people already, and this week, I ran into a couple of pastors. It's like, I know I shouldn't divulge my secrets. I, I've had to find ways to, to enjoy life. You know, our back patio, we set it up where we move the table out, we have chairs, and we, you know, we have heaters. We have several heaters there, and that's given us space to be together. So I've, I've tried to find new ways of feeling the joy that I sometimes have missed this past year. The death and resurrection of Jesus are acts of grace. God does not love 
one person or one group more than another. God is not a biased God. The invitation to come out of the tomb is for all of us, all of us, not just a single person or not this group or, or, or that group. In Acts 10, Peter sees deep living means we seek to love people with different backgrounds, race, culture, socioeconomic, uh, whatever those differences are. Followers of Jesus are changed, are transformed to live as God-pleasers. And this is the basis of, uh, of our church, that the unity is, is in the resurrection. It's, it's Jesus inviting all of us to come together, to fellowship together. Verse 35 says that in every nation, all who fear, all who fear God and do right are acceptable. The resurrection makes it possible for us to be witnesses of the risen Jesus. And so my hope for all of us, for the church, is that our days will be filled with removing barriers so that God's good news of loving others and living deeply are spoken from our lips to those around us, but they're also experienced in how we live our lives daily. Food is a big part of celebrating. I think Jesus spent a lot of time eating and drinking with, with, with people. And that's important. I think that I'm glad that we had donut holes this morning and, and, and coffee and uh, you know, a bunch of those kind of things. And you know, it's just good to be together. And it's not the fellowship meal like we have sometimes, but it's a way for us to be together and to celebrate. Today we are celebrating Easter and how Jesus rose from the dead. I was reading this morning out of Matthew, the, uh, the Last Supper. You know, and I think sometimes we make, <laughs> I think we make this Last Supper this very holy moment, which it is, but it's almost more like the sort of like, okay, we have to really be, you know, really quiet and gentle when we... You know, and then I'm reading this, and I'm, I'm, I'm reading this, and it says, while they were eating, Jesus took bread. You know, I, I, I grew up in a smaller family. You know, there wasn't a lot of us, and we were fairly proper. You know, when I married into Kathy's family, like, there's eight kids, and we're all married, and, and there's this big old table. And I have to admit that I probably found myself thinking this morning that Jesus sitting at a table eating, you know, with these disciples probably was more like maybe Kathy's family when we're all talking together, and suddenly Jesus starts doing some things. And so, so maybe, maybe communion isn't all, always just this solemn whole. I mean, I, I think it can be. But maybe it was a time of celebration, of being together as a community of people. And it says that while they were eating, while they were eating, Jesus took the bread, took, took the bread and blessed it. And I don't know whether he got his bread from from wise or where he got it like I did but he took the bread and he and he broke it and he said take and eat this is my body it's a simple loaf of bread and then he took the cup and he said drink from this all of you, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for so many that their sins may be forgiven. I tell you, I won't drink wine again until that day when I drink it in a new way with you in my Father's kingdom. Then, after singing songs of praise, they went to the Mount of Olives. So singing after communion, I think that's a pretty appropriate thing, and we're going to be singing, you know, uh, as well. So, so maybe... Jesus invites us to come with our messiness and our, and our losses. And Jesus is coming to us and saying, come out of the tomb. You know, come out of this last year. All the struggles that you've had and all the, uh, the losses and all that kind of thing. Come out of the tomb and celebrate with me. This special day. A new day. 
And remember that I am with you. And I am inviting you to, to, to love me and love others, which is part of the deep living that Christ invites us to. This morning we have these little cups here, and I need five volunteers to serve. And I should, should say this, it's all gluten-free, so you don't need to worry. At the top, there's a little thing that you peel off and there's a wafer in there. And I would, once you have that, I would invite you to just hold on to it till we all eat together and then we will also uh, 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 drink together as well. So I need five, five volunteers to come and, and help serve these. So just come on up where you are and we want you to pass these around and, uh, and share with everybody. Just come and come forward and, and make sure, Rivers, you're good. Can you take it out and just let everybody just grab their, the one, just carry the basket to people and let people, yep. Judith, what did you say? This is Mick Jesus communion. So take a cup and hold on to it till we all can eat together. You know, we are so fortunate to have a day like today. Friday morning I woke up and there was snow on my van. Mm -hmm. We could say God is smiling today, that God blesses us. Well, I'm not quite sure my theology <laughs> takes me down that path. But I do give thanks when we have a day like today that we can be together and celebrate and just enjoy this nice warm air and the beautiful setting and, and everything that we have here together. So, praise to the Lord. Okay, is there anyone that does not have yet? <laughs> I forgot. Okay, why don't you bring the baskets back up here and, and make sure you take one yourself, because I even forgot. We're <laughs> in a prayer of thanksgiving. God, we hold these elements in our hands with hearts full of thanks. You've called us out of our tombs to new life, to new ways of loving and living deeply. May we live and love deeply as we eat this bread, drink this cup together as resurrected followers of Christ who lives within us and loves us deeply. Amen. So just tear the little thing off. Don't, don't litter. And then you'll find the little piece of bread in here. Let's eat this together. And then just turn it upside down. And you will 
see the the juice, the wine there. And let us drink this together now. And please hang on to that. I think we probably have garbage cans someplace or other. There's one in the back. Is there one in the back someplace or other? By the table. By the table back there. So please, when you are leaving, take this with you and let's not leave any garbage that the garbers have to pick up. Blessings to all of you as we uh, enter a new season. Is it time? Awesome. Let's, let's celebrate new life. Oop. <laughs> that was me. All right. Well, it's a tradition at James Street Mennonite Church to greet a newborn child for, with a rose and present them with a rose the first time that they are among the gathered body. So today I have a rose that is for Harriet Carson. And here, here she is. <laughs> so welcome. We welcome you, Harriet. <laughs> and we're so grateful that you are among us in person and we look forward as a congregation to get to know you and for you to get to know us and sometime in the future we'll have a parent child uh, dedication for both for Lindsay and Josh and for Harriet um, and so but that's in the future sometime today um, we welcome you Please stand and turn, if you have your books, to number 480, to I Am the Bread of Life. I am the bread of life, you who come to me shall not hunger, and who believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless. for the life of the world. 
will raise you up on the last day. This has just gone too fast. <laughs> I feel like we need to just keep worshiping and communing with one another. And so I think it's okay with Nan and Ken if we just stay for a little while longer and have our informal communion and reconnecting with one another, with God in this incredible place. Here the benediction. Blessed is the one by Jan Richardson. Blessed is the one who comes to us by the way of love, poured out with abandon. Blessed is the one who walks toward us by the way of grace that holds us fast. Blessed is the one who calls us to follow in the way of blessing in the path of joy. Amen. Christ is alive and goes before us, number 565. Christ is alive. Enjoy.